Welcome back, everyone. This is episode three of Kerbal Space Program from the ground up. Now, today we are going to revisit the attempt that we had in episode one, simply trying to make a suborbital launch, get into space, come back down, and not die. So we are going to use the Mercury program from NASA back in the 1960s as our template for how to do this. Now, if you remember, if you haven't got, seen episode one, not really that important. The important thing to remember is we built a rocket, threw it together, launched it straight up, and blew up on re-entry. So, in an attempt not to do that, we're going to look at a little bit of what uh, Mercury actually did. Uh, so this was Alan Shepard, first, uh, first manned space flight going up to a height in Earth's history of 185 kilometers. Now today we're not going to go quite that high. Kerbin, uh, in terms of the, the ratio and scaling and everything, is about 70% in terms of where the atmosphere starts where the, uh, and uh, speeds and things like that. So we're going to go up to about 130 kilometers. But this is kind of, let's take a look at uh, this um, mercury capsule analog. So basically mercury was very simple, just a straight up rocket, one engine, and a little bit of, not, not even really control fins, just kind of some, some stabilizers there right at the bottom. Launched off of a, a launching clamp that actually looked very much like this. It was circular uh, and uh, just simply served to hold the rocket upright and feed uh, the, the various coolants and so forth for pre-launch. So we're going to use this exact same thing. We have uh, up here, we've got our capsule, parachutes, and a, uh, an escape tower. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and open this up on the launch bay, or the launch pad, and I, I'll go ahead and demonstrate this escape tower. Now this, this escape tower is entirely stock. It's made up of a, uh, a one, one structural girder, a... Uh, and, and four sepatrons, but those sepatrons do provide enough thrust that if we hit our abort sequence, it's right up here, or you can hit backspace, um, you have to set that up just in the uh, in the action in the action groups, just like you would anything else. And uh, if we hit backspace, you'll see what happens. Separates everything, pulls the uh, capsule presumably away from danger. And we have to uh, jettison that launch tower and deploy the parachutes. And as long as we're not going too fast, as long as we're not running, uh, as long as the rocket or something doesn't run into us, it will return our brave astronaut back to Earth. Um, if you are trying to be very careful with your Kerbals, it's a good idea to set up an abort sequence, either something like this, or, you know, it can, it can be as elaborate as you want it to be. The idea is just to take whatever your command module is and get it separated from the rest of the rocket and away from that rocket as quickly as possible, so that if things are exploding all around you or, or flailing or going all crazy, that uh, you can jettison your Kerbals and, and get them back safely. Um, so we're going to go ahead and end this. Let me just restart the flight. All right. So Mercury 7. Freedom 7, I should say. Freedom 7 was the capsule. So we're just going to go up. And I'll kind of describe the, uh, the launch profile of Mercury as we do it. So we're going to just head straight up. Essentially, it was entirely done by computer, actually. Again, uh, for all those people who think that MechJeb is cheating. Uh, about 16 seconds into the flight, going straight up, the computer automatically initiated a roll maneuver, pitching it over to 45 degrees, and essentially holding that until the fuel ran out. So we're going to just continue our ascent here along a similar uh, trajectory. The idea was simply to um, get the entire vessel out of Earth's atmosphere, 
and then uh, bring it down. The, la the landing target was about 150 miles east of Cape Canaveral. Hmm, I wonder why it's tilting up like that. I guess I probably should have hit kill rotation rather than just trusting it to stay at 45 degrees. Okay. So we're going to hold like that. We should have just enough fuel to get us up to the scale 130 kilometers. At least we can hope. Yeah, we should be fine. Bring up our vessel information window here. Okay, just about there. Almost out of fuel. I'm going to go ahead and cut it there, even though we could have technically kept going. Oh, actually, it ran out right away. Okay, so 140 kilometers, that's just about perfect. Uh, first things first, we're going to separate our capsule and go ahead and jettison our escape tower, since everything is going according to plan, and uh, escape towers don't really do any good for re-entry. So, go like that. And about three, two, one, we are now in space, and the music kicks on to confirm that fact. We can see KSC way back in the distance. Very cool. So we're going to coast to Apoapsis, and what happened in the uh, Mercury mission uh, was that they actually the, um, the heat shield that they had designed was not strong enough just to simply allow a ballistics trajectory to bring them back in. So what they actually did was at Apoapsis for 10 seconds they fired some retro rockets that removed about 170 meters per second from their forward velocity. Now things are not equal in uh, at, we don't have one-to-one -one parts or anything so we can't do exactly that but what I've done is uh, is gone ahead and put in, you can kind of see it here, we have a RCS tank and a whole bunch of just the uh, the straight RCS boosters. So what this will do is allow us to kind of emulate that. These are much lower thrust, so what I'm going to do is at Apoapsis, I'm going to let MechJeb keep me in a retrograde uh, trajectory, and then I am going to just full-on fire those as retro rockets until we run out of fuel. And that should, hopefully, uh, lower our, our incoming descent speed to the point where when we do actually hit 30,000 kilometers and the, uh, the re-entry effects kick in, we won't explode. Uh, so I do have the deadly re-entry mod still installed. I'm going to try and keep doing that uh, with, with all of these missions so that we can be as realistic as possible. So we are quickly coasting up to Apoapsis. As soon as we are there, just going to fire RCS full on and keep going until we run out. I guess I'm going to go ahead and pull up the uh, actual mono propellant that remains. about 40 second apoapsis. I'm just gonna time warp just a bit. There we go. Three, two, one. We're just gonna burn this all the way down, killing our lateral velocity. And as our ballistics trajectory changes, it's of course going to kill our vertical velocity as well. I'm 
I'm not going to make you guys sit through this entire thing, so in, uh, through the magic of post-production, I'm going to accelerate this, and I will catch back up with you, with you when we start to enter the atmosphere. All right, we are in the atmosphere, and I am keeping that uh, retro rocket stage attached for now. In the mission, after uh, after the 10 second burn, they jettisoned it immediately, but I'm hoping this will add just a little bit more drag and keep us slowing down. Okay, you should see seeing right re-entry effects pretty soon. There they are. I'm going to go ahead and separate from that in case it explodes, uh, but hopefully that will protect us just a little bit. Ah, very good. Okay. That's, ah, there we go. Deploy the drogue chutes, kill our vertical velocity, and now that we're coming down at a relative pace, uh, let's see, yeah, so unfortunately I'm not actually sure what the total distance is between these two points, but uh, I'm going to guess it's more than 150 miles. <laughs> The strange density and uh, and size of carbon is making makes it a little bit difficult to try and compare anything to real world measurements. But overall, Mitdo Kerman has done pretty well, I think. Coming down. Parachutes will fully deploy at 500 meters. There they go. And coast down at a, at a relatively leisurely 4.4 meters per second. All right, well, there we go. Our first successful launch and return. No casualties, very successful flight. And uh, Wait for him to splash down here. Mitdo looking very pleased with himself, and he should be. First Kerman in orbit, or in space, not orbit yet. We'll try, maybe try that next time. All right. Coming down just as the sun finishes setting. And splash down. Well, that's it for for this episode. Relatively quick one, but at least it was a success this time. So, uh, if you like the video, go ahead, and give it a thumbs up, or subscribe to the channel if you want to. And uh, we'll see you next time.